Hello makers. I'm looking forward to getting to talk to you today about one of my favorite makes for the Tim Holtz Ideology 2023 release. And that is the book nook that I got to make. I have been looking at book nooks for months and months um, as they have come across my feed. Uh, I know that people sell the kits to make them and I have been in thoroughly intrigued with all the little scenes. I love little scenes that just let your imagination run. And so book nooks just, I think they're completely intriguing. So I wanted to try and make them with Tim Holtz ideology, but I just have not had the time to do that yet. And so this is my first book nook, my first attempt at it. And so let's go ahead and uh, take a few minutes. I have the back binding, and then of course I have the nook portion. And so I'll talk about all the details when we come back, but let's go ahead and get started. I, because I'd never made one of these and I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants, I just kept adding things as I went. So forgive me uh, for not having up front everything that you needed. It will be added kind of as we go along because this was really difficult for me to figure out and it took me a really long time uh, as I was working on it. So please be patient with this particular uh, tutorial. And uh, when I make another one, I will do it a little bit differently as I probably tell you throughout the, uh, the video process. But I really love the end result and so I can't wait to come back and talk to you about some of the things in here that I just adore. So let's go ahead and get started with the make and then we'll wrap it up at the end. Normally during this time, I take a few minutes to tell you what you're gonna need to make this project or the main things at this point. I really have no idea how this is gonna even turn out. This is just an idea that I had, and so I thought I would start letting you know what I'm hoping to make, and then we'll just make adjustments along the way. As you can tell, I'm I'm sick. Uh, I have been sick off and on this whole month, so please bear with me in all of my ideology videos for the next few weeks because I'm gonna sound like this. So anyway, um, I got this idea to make a book nook and I just keep seeing them. I don't know if they're in your feed or not, or if it's just because I was fascinated with them, but they started coming up, you know, when you watch one little video or ad or something like that, then they're in, all over in your Facebook and all over in your Instagram. So I keep getting them showing up and there are companies that sell kits to make your own and they have this intricately cut out little miniature staircases and building fronts and alleyways and all of those things. Uh, but I wanted to try and make one with ideology and I may be absolutely crazy and I maybe shouldn't even start this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. So let's just, let's just give it a shot. Um, I was going to make a book nook out of two of the small vignette trays. So you have to basically buy it like this. It comes with the large tray and the small tray. And then remember, always save the foam that's in here because you can use it to add dimension behind items. Anyway, so unfortunately, you're going to have to buy two sets of vignette trays, but all is not lost because... You can do wonderful things with the large trays, making amazing vignettes and, and panels and all kinds of things like that. So take the two small trays out, pop off like, you know, you just grab it and pop it off, um, pop off the front of two of the trays. Um, well, actually one of each tray. Okay. And so then you'll end up with three sides. So it will go like this. But if you look at it, this Although it's the width of a book, and since this goes between books, it is the width, but I was, I'm not going to be able to really get much of a seam in there. And so what I'm going to do is take these and cut them in half so that I can just glue them. I don't need it along the back, but I can glue it too wide along the bottom, and that will make it about that wide and there I can get a little scene in there 
and then I'll glue the other half in the top and that will be my book nook so it'll be about that wide okay about four inches so I think that'll be good um, a good width to be able to get a scene I hope I'm also gonna try and light it up and then I'm gonna try and do my book binding like I always do for my books and things since this is gonna be on a bookshelf so I'm gonna try and do my book binding and I thought I might do like the front cover with this from the new palettes um, volume I think it's five backdrops volume five and then this went on this side so I might do that for the cover I haven't quite decided yet and then something else for the binding on the back because that's gonna be hiding my tiny lights so at this point the only thing i am gonna know that you're gonna need for this project are two packages of the vignette trays tiny lights some backdrops paper chipboard and then we'll just see and one of the things that kind of inspired me with this one is the little hat because I thought this would look so cute on a gentleman's desk or something in a library. Or if it was a storefront, kind of like in a milliner's storefront. And I just thought, oh, that is so cute. And so I really want to use this as well. So hopefully that's going to make it into my book nook. So this one's going to be an adventure, friends. Again, I apologize for my voice. And I may end up doing voiceovers for most of this. But I want to invite you once again to join with me and let's get making. This is a book nook update. I took the front sides and I cut them in half. There was a little bit left over on each one. And I used my snips. They cut through it really, really well. I was so surprised. So I will show you. I have a piece here. And so I just put it in and use both hands and it just snaps just like that. Look at that. Nice. I love it. So, uh, oh, I shouldn't have done. Oh no, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, so that's how I did that. That's also how I cut the second story walkway. So I have this piece left over from the divided boxes and sometimes I take parts out and so this is going to go across here as kind of a walkway there's going to be a wall back there and then it's going to have this going across for the second story and so that's how I trimmed that I use my snips totally love it if you don't have snips you can use the trimmer or if you have a little saw or something like that go ahead and use that so I trimmed the front sides in half and uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I turned them completely in half. And then I put the little extra over here, um, you know, because there was a quarter of an inch back here. So they fit fine. I went ahead and attached these with a piece of uh, craft stock. And I just attached it to this side and this side. And then that allows me to open it up so that I can go ahead and put things all the way in the back until I'm ready to, to attach it like this. Um, so I decided that would be the easiest way for me to get things in the back and also for me to be able to run any of my lights up and through. So that's how I got the main structure built. And you can see that I just added glue onto this and then glue onto this. And so, you know, you could easily just pull that off if you needed to, but it works. Um, I will be putting, of course, paper on both on the inside that will hold it in place some more. So that is my cat Exitensio. He wanted in while I was videotaping, and then now he's decided he wants out, so he opens the door. So uh, you'll probably hear him over there trying to get the door open. All right. Next thing is that I'm going to have a wall um, an inch or so from the back that the balcony will run along so the wall will be on the back side and then this will be on the front side overlooking the little office library area and for the library I have a tiny 
bookshelf. So this is the smallest of the vignette boxes. They have four of them, and this is the smallest one. And then to make the little shelves, I just trimmed out some of uh, the thick wood. I cut it, and then I trimmed out the little scallops so that it would fit in there, and I'm just gonna collage glue it in there for shelves. And then I'll put some little books on there. And I may not use the books for memoir because they are too big uh, for this bookshelf. So I may just make some out of paper and then stick like uh, curator snippets on them. So, but you can see that it fits and then it leaves actually a little doorway. So this will, uh, as I said, it this will be up here on the wall and then you'll have the walkway over it. So that's going well. In the back, I wanna have a window and I haven't decided which window yet, but I'm thinking I may do this window like this because you can only see this part right here, really when you look in it. And then I'm gonna put a vellum scene behind it and light it up so that when you're looking through the doorway, you'll just kind of see a little scene outside the windows back in the back. Uh, so I, th I think that's what I've decided to do is to go with that because the rest of these were just too big in, you know, I mean, they fit, but it, they're just, the windows themselves are just too big for, for this project. Um, the other thing is that I thought I might do a doorway on each side at the end of the walkway. And so to do that, I thought I would cut this down the middle and then maybe add some panels um, or get another one of these. I have several of them and I could cut down. Oh, no. Oh yeah. Existential exited and Leota came in. So you got both of them in this segment of the video. <laughs> um, so I thought I could do this one as well if I wanted, but I, either way, I'm just going to cut a chipboard to go down the middle. And then if I paint it, uh, it'll kind of look like a panel door. And this will be a two panel door. And then the cut will allow me to put it towards the back here and then towards the back on this side so that you won't see the cut side. And I think that will look nice up on the second story as a way to get through on the hallway banister up above. So there's that. And then I want to make a little, I think I want to make a mantle in here and a little table to put that little uh, hat and maybe a vase. So, because remember, I'm going to put the hat. Although um, I was looking and the hat looks super cute on top of this. So I may do that too, because really that is super cute. I love it. Um, this is one of those projects where you just have to do a whole bunch of different little things and steps and then kind of put it all together at the end. So I took one of the, I think this is ornate baseboard frames. Not exactly sure. I'll put it down here. And so I took one of those. I went around the outside edge and the inside lip with statuary foundry wax, just rubbed it on there with my finger and then heated it so that I could put it on the wall. Um, and then this is a piece of ephemera from the uh, palette ephemera pack for this release. This is also from the palette ephemera pack, palette ephemera pack, palette ephemera pack, palette ephemera pack. Yes, palette ephemera pack. So I just went through and I pulled some things that I thought I could frame. Now, you're probably looking at these thinking, why didn't she frame that? Well, they're a little too big for the deco frames. And that's what I have a, a ton of these. I absolutely love them. So I have a ton of them, but I only used one of each in the pack so that if you were doing this project, uh, you wouldn't have to buy more than one pack. If I wasn't considering that, uh, I actually would have used two of these, two of these, and two of these instead, uh, because I thought they kind of fit a little bit better. This is from the Botanic Layers release from this 
or from this release and it's a central park it looks like it, maybe it was a bookmark that was given away could have been a long map i really don't know anyway so i just framed half of it because i thought it might look kind of cool like an estate map or something like that and like i said if i was not taking into consideration anyone else just using my stash i would have uh, framed another one of these on this end and probably put them above each other on one of the walls in my book nook. This one is probably going to go above it as it is. So for all of these frames, I went over them with just a little bit of foundry wax statue with my finger, uh, heated them up, and then used collage medium to glue them onto these different pieces of ephemera and layers. Um, so I guess this is the only layer now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, these are all ephemera. So anyway, um, organic layers, if not, frame something else. Okay, then last but not least, let's see, let me move these. These are still drying. Inside, I have kind of just stored everything, but I started to cover the walls, and so I pulled this blue Dama pattern, floral pattern. From. Here's how the bookshelf turned out, using just those little pieces of the etc. trim that I, I cut down. I pulled two of these windows, and um, you wouldn't have to use two. I'm just doing it because, again, I love windows. I have a million of them. Um, you could probably get away with just cutting some chipboard to go along the outside edge because I'm going to try and light this up. But for me, I just am feeling lazy and I'm kind of down to the wire. So I'm just going to use two frames instead. Another one of the frames that I took out is this one and I'm making my mantle out of it and so it is drying so I just took some extra wood pieces you could use balsa wood you could use anything you want to kind of build it up so that I have the sides of it that come down the legs and then I have a, a wider mantle and that's gonna go over here right it's gonna look like this when it's done drying and then I'm going to paint it probably lost shadow age it a little bit and then I'm going to attach this so you can see this is one of the new of the floral adornments and I just went over it with a little statue foundry wax as well trying to keep everything so that it looks cohesive so it's going to be gray with that little bit of statue here and there and some blues I kind of want it to look I don't know like it's an old mansion this is going to go on here and this is just a metal gate and another one of the ornaments. Uh, it's the adornments ornaments. And there are three pieces. You could actually use any of them. So if you wanted, you could use this. Or you could use this one. But I thought the flower looked nice and it kind of coordinated with this over here. So this will be going across the back. Uh, on the little balcony area up at, up at the top. So I'm going to keep working on this. Uh, it will probably, uh, I'm, I will, I may paint it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. She's just demanding love. She's absolutely fine, but she's getting really demanding. Well, this one will be over the mantle here. And then, uh, let me tell you very quickly how I made the mantle. So, as I said, it was this, and I cut. <laughs> I hear you, sweet girl. Mama loves that sweet girl. Okay, let me finish. So, I cut the center out, and then I laid it on here, and then I just trimmed the bottom about where the bottom goes. So, I just trimmed it off and then attached it to uh, some wood so it would be raised up when I put it on here. And then I think that'll be really cute and looks very kind of, I don't know, hopefully 
Victorian. So this so. is my first book nook, and I'm not really sure how it the engineering is going to work, but I think this is going to be really fun. So I'm going to let these finish drying. I will trim around them. I just wanted you to know, you know, where I got all of the pieces and let you see them before I trim them out and see how I just kind of, you know, framed different parts of them so that they could be art on the walls in my book nook. I've been working on all the little bits and bobs and pieces and things that are going to go into my book nook. But now I'm going to go ahead and start on the structure so that I can start adding things. And I may be doing this out of order. And you know, I'll let you know if I do so that you don't make the same mistake. But I just feel like before I can start building things on the walls inside that I need to get a lot of the outside work done and then prepped for the binding part. So I have already scratched up the top and bottom where these are gonna be the pages. So I've scratched them up already so that they're, they're gonna look like pages. I'm gonna paint these with old paper so that I can then go over them with my Distress Crayon and it will look kind of old. Then I need to also add these strips of chipboard and you know I've been doing this in layers of two or three so that it will look like the edge of my binding um, or of my covers and so this will look like the edge of my cover so I do two on that side and two on this side and sometimes I do an eighth of an inch, so I went ahead and cut some eighth of an inch, but I'm feeling like the quarter inch is what I need for this wider uh, book nook. Uh, so I'll show you. So here are the quarter inch strips, and I just feel like they're, or eighth inch strips, I feel like they're just a little bit too thin for this wide book, see? So, oops, there you go. So I'm really thinking that the eighth inch is, or is too thin. I'm sticking with this for both sides. So I need to add it to the top and bottom edges like this, and then also to the bottom. I'm going to, of course, add them to the front. So I need some to cut some longer strips for that. I need to cut longer strips for each edge right here because remember I, I build it up usually because my books are sitting like this I only do this on the top side that's facing up so it looks like the side of the binding but on this one I'm going to need to do it on both sides because this will be like this in a bookcase and if people want it with the book nook portion setting out this would be facing back and you wouldn't necessarily see it but sometimes you might not want it showing maybe certain times of the year or different things like that. So maybe you want the binding showing. And so I, you know, want this to look nice. Or if you have it, maybe somebody has it sitting somewhere and you can see the sides of it. So I, I want um, all of the sides to have the raised side of the binding. Okay, so I will be doing that as well. I'm not gonna do anything on the back of the binding yet. I'll do that at the end. Now let's talk about the covers very quickly. So I don't have two of any papers to have a matching cover. And because it's so long and I'm using quarter inch uh, edges of my cover, uh, I need it to go over enough, my papers to go over enough that I have enough to cover those. So I'm gonna need the length, the whole length of my papers and I will put it out a little bit so it will wrap around this edge and it will wrap around this edge for the cover. So I needed to find two papers that coordinated well together. I really loved this and I actually really loved this and I was gonna go with this, but I didn't have the paper that coordinated with this is the back side. The other greens didn't coordinate well enough with this so that um, I felt comfortable using it. So I'm gonna use the green side on this one. And then I'm gonna buy two packs of this Backdrops Volume 5 because I just, these are so gorgeous. They're beautiful, beautiful papers. So I want plenty of them. So I'm gonna um, 
go ahead and use the green from the Backdrops Volume 5 and then this yellow for the front cover. So what will happen is I'll have it hanging over just a little bit like this. And then you can see this is almost the back. So I'll have a little strip left over. But this is going to be on the binding and I'll probably put some gold strips across it. So it'll go like this. Okay. And uh, so that allows me to use one piece here. And then I needed something for the back. There wasn't a yellow that went well with this yellow. Most of them were a little brighter, which is fabulous. Um, if you're going to use the other things in here, but I needed something a little more neutrally yellow. So neutral. You're right. I went with volumes five. And so I just looked through all of the papers in volume five and landed on this one. And it has um, just a great color that I think goes super well with this. They aren't going to be next to each other. This will be on the back side, so no one's going to notice uh, too much about the uh, that they aren't exact, but I think that they coordinate really, really well. So this will go on the front side. This will go on the back side. This will be the binding, and you can see that it goes really well with that one as well. So I'm super happy with the, the cover. Um, at this point, what I will be doing first, and I'll, I will go ahead and let you see this again, even though I've done this technique multiple times in other videos, I'm going to go ahead since um, I'm doing it a little differently since it's a stand-up book. So I'm going to go ahead and put these um, on and then I will uh, cover the front and back. I'm not going to do the binding like I said until later on, but I'll get that done and I'm also going to paint the page ends so that they look like the pages of a book. of the edging with the chipboard is done I went ahead and sanded it down a little bit so that I didn't have to put so much craft stock around everything since I'm doing it in if I was doing it all together I would go ahead and put the heavy craft stock all the way around but since I'm doing it in two um, steps I wanted to go ahead and sand this so that the edges weren't quite so harsh uh, so I just used a little sanding block uh, that I got off Amazon and just sanded around just to kind of round these all a little bit so you can see that I have a binding on both sides since it is going to be sitting up I have the uh, cover that goes out and over the front lip and then over on the bottom so that when it sits it actually does sit up just the tiniest bit above uh, the ground one other thing before I get started uh, covering it is that uh, I realized I was having trouble deciding where I wanted to house the battery pack. And because I wanted people to be able to turn it around this way if they needed to, um, so that the binding would be out, I didn't want to attach them to the binding. I didn't want to, of course, attach them to the cover. So um, that kind of left the underneath pages and if I just used a couple of layers of chipboard, it wasn't deep enough for me to be able to attach this. And I'm probably going to need two. So I was going to need to attach two here and then have the lights go through before I put the binding on. So I had to add extra layers of the chipboard um, to this. And there probably was a better way, but uh, I just kept piling it up, piling it up, and then you know, measuring this to make sure that I could fit it underneath some. So I just went over everything with uh, another set of, uh, another round of old paper. So this is painted. 
As you can see, I have not distressed yet. I don't do that until the very end. So I won't be distressing this even after I get the paper on today. So I have cut the paper so that it will be just inside this because the binding will come over onto that. And I laid it down like this when I did it to make sure that I could center this and have enough to wrap around the lips. And because I can still open this, what I'll be doing is when I get to this part, I'm going to wrap it around so that this edge is finished. And then I'll take an X-Acto knife and just go ahead and trim in there. And so I'm going to put some removable tape on this so I don't mess up my paper that I put down too prematurely, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pr protect that while I'm covering the binding edge, but I think it'll just look nice if I have that paper wrapped all the way around the edge here so that it uh, is completely finished. I think that'll just be a nice edge. I have the cover on the book nook so you can see I have the front covers on and the top looks great goes all the way over and any little imperfections that I see at least it's wrapped all the way around you know those will be covered up when I add the distress crayon uh, for all of the pages and then also it goes in the crevices and it covers up any imperfections so I don't worry about that you can see that it does finish those inside edges and then when it's closed you really can't see the back side where there might be a little bit of um, raw paper uh, or some things like that you can't see it when it's closed so it covers that front part and then for the bottom it doesn't go all the way over because remember I had to add the chipboard so that I could get the um, battery packs in there and again that's okay because you're not going to see it. It's going to be the bottom of the book. It did what it needed to do, and that was to make sure that the edge was covered so that you didn't have just that raw book. So it looks like the book cover goes all the way around, even though it doesn't on the bottom. And then that front corner is covered, so it looks like a complete book cover all the way around. Now, now it is ready for me to add the binding, but again, remember, we're going to do that at the very end. But just so that you can see that when I do get that binding on, it will go around on both sides nicely. It's gonna cover that little bit that I didn't get covered here, which is what I wanted. And it'll do the same on the back. And then uh, on this part, I will just add, you know, some you know, little strips of gold or something like that.
Okay, so, and then um, that will be, if someone wants to turn it around, the back will look nice or they can do it this way. Now, I'm gonna stop working on that for right now because I need to do these walls and then I'm gonna go ahead and start closing it up. Now I do need to do some things like ceilings and floors, but that's gonna cause a little bit of a problem, especially on the floor because I can't just you know put the whole floor down because I still need to open it up so I'm going to go ahead and and just take this piece of wood grain I'm going to color it and I'm going to cut it into planks and I'm just going to attach the planks to the floor and um, just you know to this side so that when I eventually do put these together like that it will look like a wood plank floor and hopefully that little extra bit won't uh, show through too much but I have to do that because as I put things down I have to have the floor underneath so when I'm putting the the mantle on I need the floor underneath I went in a little bit of a crazy direction and decided that I wanted to make some molding so I just took chipboard and I cut it into eighth inch quarter inch and then three quarter inch strips. Then I glued them together. So here's the eighth inch, here's the quarter inch, and then this is three quarter inch. I only made two that are really big and wide like this. These are the moldings that are gonna go under the ceiling. The rest of them are just double. And actually that one needs painted gray. So I painted them after I glued them together, I painted them uh, white with picket fence to save my lost shadow uh, because I only have one lost shadow and everything is lost shadow right now. So uh, then what I did was I put it around the top and the bottom of the little vignette box to make kind of a more decorative bookcase. So that's drying. The little piece that I cut that is going to be the balcony. So I put it across that. And then this is going to go on there and I have to find something that I can put to fill in the ends here. Then on the end of the balcony, when you rock across on both sides, it's going to be a door. So I cut a window in half and then I just cut some chipboard and stuck it in the window. And this is just some craft stock just to hold it. So I stuck um, a chipboard in the wind in the middle. And then this one will go on this side, so you won't see this over here. You're only gonna see this part. And this one will go on this side, so you'll only see this part. And just gives you the idea that there is a, um, like a, you know, a little door up there on the balcony. Then this is gonna be the skylight to let some light in. This is actually the same window, but I had cut out these for my, uh, Santa's I cut out the brackets so that I had a six a small six square window for my Santa's uh, mill post office all right then uh, I put some across the top of my mantle and then just did a couple of little pieces of chipboard across the top and I also put one here where my two pieces attached there for the mantle. So that's drying. And then these are going to go here. The big one's going to go up here. And then here, like that. Please bear with me as I talk through this because this update is probably 24 hours after the last one that I just did. I went to work, came home, ate lunch, and I have been working for 11 hours straight on this to get all the details just right. So I left you off with the fact that I had spent hours... <laughs> Um, just coming up with some of the details that I really enjoyed, like the doors for the, my balcony, all of the uh, 
wood trim that I just cut out of chipboard. And then I did for, you know, the walls and the baseboards. And then here's uh, the back wall that has some of the trim uh, as well as the baseboards. So I spent a lot of time on that yesterday as well as finishing up adding trim to the mantle, the bookcase, and all kinds of things like that. So today I spent a lot of time on other details and I just get lost doing this. I, I really have so much fun. So I'm not going to apologize for how long this project takes. It takes a long time because it's very detailed. And so if this isn't the kind of project that's for you because you just want to, you know, get in there and get something made and get something done very quick, maybe one of the other two things, the lantern or the, uh, the, the clock uh, that I made are going to be more up your alley uh, than something like this. But I just have so much fun with the details on these pieces and that that brings me joy in creating and and I know for some of you you also get kind of lost in all the little fun details so you know this project is for those of us that just you know find joy in that let me point some of them out because as you know this piece is a book nook so it is going to be like this and the walls are going to be facing each other and so you won't know about some of the details unless you watch this video and you'll be able to see them because I'm going to show them to you right now. So on this side, uh, as you can see, I have that door that I talked about yesterday that I made that is going to be the balcony door. I have my deco frames added to the wall that I talked about doing. And then I ended up moving, the bookcase was going to be on the back wall, but I ended up moving it to this wall so that it was opposite the mantle. It just fit better that way. And so let's talk about what I did on the bookcase. So as you can see, I added a bunch of trim yesterday, which was fun. Uh, and then on top of the bookshelf, I have one of the tiny corked vials. And all I did for that, if you can see right here, I went around the lip with statue foundry wax, just put some on there, uh, got it nice and hot. And then that's just my own little detail. I don't know how many people will even be able to see that. Inside, I filled it with some little beads. And these beads are just beautiful. They are in a set I got from Sizzix. And so Sizzix has these sets of sequins and beads. This one is called Silver Sequins and Beads. I don't know if they're still available. I would imagine that they are. But there's a whole little... Um, I don't know, container in here, I guess, of these silver beads. So I thought they went really well with the color scheme. And so I filled up that little tiny vial with the silver beads and then just tied some thread around the top. The flowers are just the bouquet flowers. And let's see, I have some packet, just the bouquet flowers. And... <clears throat> Let me talk a little bit about, well, first let's do the colors. So this is festive berries. This is tattered rose and a little bit of sponge sugar. And then you're going to notice there's some kind of yellow and green stuff going on here. That is actually, so in the middle of each of the little bouquet packets, there are these little centers and then just some tissue paper. And so I colored that with shabby shutters and peeled paint. And then I pulled some of these off and used them as leaves. I kind of trimmed them up so they were pointy and then stuck the little tissue leaves in there. And then this back here is actually this right here, again, colored with shabby shutters and peeled paint. So I went ahead and popped that in there. I colored the centers of the red ones with the peeled paint and it kind of turned them a little bit yellowy orange. So I really love how this little bouquet turned out. I think it's super fun and um, so don't throw away these pieces with the tissue right here because you even see how it it even is shaped like a little leaf right there you can just color it green and then just pop it in with those bouquet flowers don't let any of that go to waste okay 
Now, next to it, I have one of the new word tags. This is story. And let me find my tweezers. I just have them here. So I glued the this story word tag down and it is colored with stormy sky distress paint. And then once it was dry and I wiped it off of the letters, I took a tiny bit of foundry wax statue and put that on it and then heated it up. So there's a little tiny bit of gold. It's very hard to hold up here so you can see. And then I didn't glue the, the key down, but I probably should. And so the key is colored with peeled paint. And I did the same thing where I tapped a little bit of foundry wax on there. And then I have a small jump ring holding them together. And then I tied uh, some string around them. For the adorable adornments figure stand, I did the base in statue foundry wax, painted the hat ground espresso distress paint, and then I went over the whole thing when it was dry with a wash of picket fence distress paint so that it would give it kind of that old look. And you can see how it kind of went down into the crevice there and some things like that. So it kind of looks old and oxidized. Tied a little blue string around there. And then I colored this uh, bouquet flower with a little bit of Stormy Sky Distress Stain. So that's everything on the top of my bookcase. The little books are not from the memoir pack of Ephemera. Those books were a little too big for this tiny book stand. And so I just made my own with about three quarters of an inch strips of book paper, three quarters of an inch to an inch of book paper and, you know, cut it and then made all my pages. The covers are just leftover bits of paper that I grabbed from any of my backdrops. So if I had scraps like this, just grab them from any of my backdrops and I made book covers. So that's simple enough. And then for these edges here, the little, I don't know, title things, those are from Curator Snippets. And a lot of times for Curator Snippets, I will go through and just cut something like this off or maybe something like that off and maybe even just a name. I'll just trim that part out and I'll use that for the binding. As you can see, here's a name. I think I found the word botany on one of them and some things like that. Now I realized that I did not uh, glue these two in for some reason, so I needed to do that. I need to remember to do it. And then this is just a, a piece of the mini flare with the butterfly on it. And that pretty much does it for this side. For this side, not too much. I went ahead and used this ornate baseboard frame around this beautiful sketch of uh, this um, lovely Victorian lady. And I really wanted this to be a focal point. So two of the things that I wanted to be focal points were the Dormant's figure stand and this beautiful piece from the uh, palette ephemera pack. I used another one of the tiny corked vials, took the cork out of this one as well. I actually topped it, I don't know if you can see that, but I topped it with one of the antique gems. And then uh, I filled it also with the silver beads from Sizzix. This is from Curator, some more thread. I also did foundry racks around the top edge of this so they would coordinate. Another mini flare, some more uh, bouquet, and these were also tattered rose and um, spun sugar, and then that little bit of the tissue paper for the leaf poking out there. I also took just a piece of white heavy stock, colored it with lost shadow. Uh, weathered wood, hickory smoke, pumice stone, and then I ran it through the Brick Texture Fade 3D Mini to make my uh, fireplace. And I even cut a little quarter of an inch strip to 
go down here at the bottom of the fireplace for just a little detail. Always something that you want to be sure you do. And then I have this door. Now you're going to notice that I have a gap here on both sides. And I have run the lights up this side right here with that red line tape. So I have them all up here. When I light it up, what I'm going to do, I have them kind of like this. So this is Yupo, translucent Yupo, and it is between two of the window frames. So I will put these in here. I'll probably attach some paper on here first um, with red line tape so that these are contained and then I can attach them easier. But this is gonna go up here on the roof and it may look like it's sticking over, but don't forget that this is gonna, and I want it centered. And so when this closes, I'm trying to turn it, uh, I wanna be sure that it's centered, okay, when I attach that. So that's gonna go there. And then let me show you what it'll look like when I turn it on. So then it'll shine down on the little room like that so that my book nook will light up. I had all kinds of grandiose ideas of putting in sconces, lighting up the fireplace, lighting up a window, um, but I, it's been hard enough just to engineer this. So let's talk about engineering because we've talked about the left side, we've talked about the right side, we have not talked about the back. So the back, this is the back wall, and it is going to be out just about this much. You can actually see how far it's going to be out. So I have put some craft stock that is folded so that when I attach it, I will be attaching it like this. So it will line up. And then I can go ahead and glue this down, and I can glue it to these three sides over here. And that will be ready to go so that when I get to the point that I'm going to close this, I'll be able to then attach it to this side as well. Now, before I do that, though, I will do the other two pieces, and that's the balcony. So the back uh, side of the balcony looks like this, and that's why I have that gap up here. So this fits into the gap and against the back wall, and then I would glue it down to that back wall and then my lights I'm not going to glue the top because my lights are going to slip like that when I put the lights on like that okay so that's how that'll work okay now this is going to be on here. This will be here. And you can see that they are not lined up because here is the super cute balcony. So I used, whoops, I used some linen tape. Even though no one's going to see it, that's my, you know, carpet runner on the piece of wood. And then I used, so let me just set this. I used a metal fence. I used one of the new ornate adorn ornate adornments here. Everything has had a layer of foundry wax statue put onto it. These are some of the adornments floral. And then once the foundry wax was cool, I went over it with a layer of picket fence to give it just kind of that oxidized look that I've been, for whatever reason, I've been totally into. You can also see that I put a piece of the chipboard molding across the front before I attach these. And I attach them to the front, but I also attach them just to that little ledge right there. I try to make sure that they didn't go over the sides. And then I put a couple of tack nails here for this to, to go against. So it's the the gate is stuck between the tack nails and then these on the front. And I'm going to tell you, I attached these with E6000 this time. 
uh, because I needed something super duper strong. And my collage medium is usually good, but because this was going to be out in the middle of, you know, nowhere, I really, really needed extra strength. So once the walls are up like this, then this is going to go under the door and above this wall, and it will go onto the back over here like that. So that's how the balcony is going to be attached. And then once it's dry and it, I'm, I feel like it's firmly attached, then I will go ahead and I'll close this side and I'll have to finagle it. And then this is where I will probably, most likely, cut the back so that I have both hands in and I can work with it both ways. But let me see if I can just... You can just kind of get an idea, since I can't really finagle it right now, what it will look like once I get it put together and I have that balcony across the back and then this little here on the front. And then for the bottom, I wanted a little bit of a rug or something like that. And so I used two more pieces of the linen tape, the blue linen tape, and I just fringed it out on the edges to make it look like a little rug and that's gonna go on the carpet here, on the, the wood between the bookcase and the mantle. So that's gonna be my little magical book nook. I totally love it. Uh, the last thing I will have to do is put the binding on and then I also am going to, probably on the front, um, but maybe on the back on the binding, I'm going to put, don't wait for the perfect moment, take the moment and make it perfect. Because I kind of feel like this just seems like such a relaxing, beautiful little place that you could just sit and read a book and enjoy things. Especially a wonderful rainy day kind of curled up by the fire. So a perfect moment. I hope, I know that was long-winded, but um, I am at this point going to be finishing up everything here. And I am not going to be able to really show you how I put this together because it's going to take a lot of just finagling and messing around and getting it in place. So hopefully that description uh, will help you if you decide you want to try one of these with a balcony. But I'm going to tell you, probably after this, the next one I do, no balcony. Because the engineering for me on this one is has just taken me way too long. Nonetheless, I do want to say this has been so much fun and I'm glad that I went ahead and tried it and I didn't just give up because it seemed like it was going to be too hard. I'm really happy with it. I have it put together. I have the lights on. So you can see the lights are behind that little window there in the top and it's all Put together so now I have to do the binding and I thought I would show you that I cut out part of the back so that I could get in here and attach the sides and the bottom over here so now I need to put some chipboard build up a little bit of chipboard here for the binding I don't want to build it up too much because I don't have a lot of paper to go around so I do want to build it up just a little bit maybe put a couple of ridges that I can turn gold possibly. And then uh, I think I may put this on the back. I was gonna put it on the front, but if I have books on each side, I think that'll be awkward. So I may put this on the back and then on the front up here. I'm going to attach this, but I can't attach it yet. It says live a story worth telling, and I can't attach it yet because I need to uh, go over the whole thing with Distress Collage Medium once I get the binding paper on, and then uh, Distress Crayon, and then I think I am done. I also got the little, whoops, 
I also got the little rug in the bottom. So this thing's pretty much done. Just need to do the binding and get that chipboard on there. And then I am finished. This really took a long time. So let me finish this up. It is, uh, I ended up not going to bed. So I'm going to go to work with no sleep on this one. Um, so it's about 530 in the morning. So I'm going to finish this up very quickly and then head to work. And so we will wrap it up just before I ship. All right, so there at the end, I was doing a lot of the, you know, the binding and things like that. So I think it turned out great. I do love it. So for the binding on this, I just used some foundry wax. It's not super smooth, um, but it's it's fine. I, I really love it, and it matches the foundry wax that I put on one of the large uh, labels. And then I have the label coat chips that uh, fit in there. I said, this one says, don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. But that was great. So if you are using a book nook like this and you don't want the nook portion to be facing out, I wanted the back to look just as nice so that you could put it between the books on your shelf. I just love the thought of, of getting to make art that is easy to store on a bookshelf. I know a lot of times people are like, well, what do you do with all your vignettes? And what do you do with this and that? Well, I thought a book nook might be a fun thing to try because you can, you know, pour yourself into making this vignette and then you can put it in your bookcase. And if seasons change or something like that, you can just turn the book around and you don't have to find a place to store it just stays on the bookshelf until you're ready to turn it back around and look at the little nook part. So this paper um, is just beautiful and goes so lovely with this yellow floral, both from the volume five uh, release of the backdrops. Beautiful, beautiful papers in the palette backdrops. So turn it to the nook side. I have one of the large word plaques that says live a story worth telling and I chose that because I really felt like this allowed you to just make your own story that's the fun of the book nook is you get to imagine the story that goes with this whole scene so I will put in some pictures that I took as and you got to see I, I did do the walkthrough before I closed it all up but I just you know wanted to show some of the things I really love, I love the figure stand adornment, 
Love the little word with the key here. How that bouquet turned out. So beautiful. The picture wall. Love all the molding out of just chipboard. The small vignette bookcase and all the teeny tiny books made out of the snippets. Curator. This beautiful paper doll colored with distressed crayons. Got, I love all the different vials. These tiny vials are so perfect for this. So much fun making this mantle and using the beautiful foliage adornments. And then this gorgeous framed sketch that was part of the inspiration for this. So as I said before, the frame sketch and then uh, the adornment, the figure adornment stand were kind of the inspiration for this. And the fact that I've been really, really wanting to make one of these. So a lot of fun making the balcony. Uh, the next time I've said this, I think already I won't be doing a balcony. I think I want to use the whole thing just as one level. But we'll see. You know, I always change my mind. And then I love how that I was able to find a piece that really actually coordinated well with the, the front floral cover from the Neutrals palette, which was volume four of the backdrops. So it all came together really just so lovely. Used one of the windows as kind of a skylight in here so that it would light it up and we can see all the wonderful detail. I think I used a ton of foundry wax and white picket fence paint on this again. Uh, that was, just seemed to be the, the thing on every single one of them that uh, I made for this release was I was using foundry wax and distress uh, picket fence paint just to kind of make this, I don't know why I was kind of into that whole kind of oxidized metal look, that French look. It seems French to me. I'm not positive that it is. Anyway, this book nook was super fun and I'm looking forward to making some again uh, in the future, maybe for holidays or for, you know, something else. I hope that you enjoyed this Fair, I'm sure that this tutorial was long. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it was long because this was a long involved make, but I absolutely loved every minute of it. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions with something like this, I am absolutely positive you're going to have questions for me. So please contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. I will email you back as soon as I can. Try and clarify anything that you need clarified. And I want to thank you so much and wish you a very creative day.